So, um, you, let's just do a roll call so uh, we'll know who's here. Go ahead and start. Uh, uh, um, Diane Christ, present. Okay. We're not council people, just to keep Just out. names, yeah. Okay. It's pre session. Oh, Sean McCoy. Jump <laughs> <Jill> back. <laughs> Diane, why don't you go first because of the last brief session we had that was actually called by Harold and you wanted to update. So oh, we'll okay. just let you go first. Okay, so talking about the train, what I wanted to mention was the North I-25 coalition is still in existence, it's gone virtual. Oh, okay. There's actually 114 people on the list, but not all were, um, you know, um, and the big uh, push for them is the FRPR, the Front Range Passenger Rail. I guess what was uh, interesting to learn about that is 0.8% is the maximum sales tax that the state can ask for, but their study in 2020 indicated that 0.5% uh, should be adequate, which we currently pay 0.4% for RTD, so it might be if we could swap those dollars for the FRPR. Open. Yeah, yeah, that then might be a kind of a neutral effect. Um, so, anyway, that's mostly what I had to say. Okay. And then I handed out about the minimum wage that um, we're going to 14.42, so we're like fifth in the nation of the 23 states that, that changed the minimum rate for like fifth out of that and um, I don't think we want to exceed New York City in terms of minimum wage changes. I think they're at 16. So just just an observation. Just what's going on in the country. So. Yeah. Alright. That's, that's my two seconds of fame. <laughs> Alright, thanks. Um, so Sister Cities was canceled so I didn't get a chance to go to that meeting. But this Thursday, we're um, having an annual, our annual meeting where we get to talk about all of our trips that we're gonna go, you know, have and I'm chaperoning to Japan. Uh, I still, hopefully Thursday, I'll know the dates for that. But the annual meeting is this Thursday. Um, and unfortunately, we would not be bringing a cohort back from Japan. So um, for whatever reasons that I'm sure we'll hear about it on Thursday as to why that's not happening. Um, so the only meeting I really had was transportation meeting. Um, they hired a new coordinator and the coordinator will be starting January 27th for Vision Zero. So yay! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, and then next Thursday at the library, we will be having, they are having uh, transportation mobility uh, meeting at the library. Um, it's next Thursday, and I think it's from 5.30 to 7. Not this coming? Is it Thursday? This? I, I, when people I don't say think next so. Thursday, I don't know what that I is. think it's the 20... What's, is next 25th? Thursday? I think so. Yeah, I didn't put the date down, unfortunately. Okay. For me. And then on February the 9th, from 7 to 9, is the winter bike. Uh, well, you, I don't know how that's going to work, but I don't bike like that. But <laughs> anyway, um, that's what <laughs> they. February 9th is where you could bike to work, yeah. When so they'll have the different stations throughout town um, for people from 7 a.m. to 9. But I think the main thing is the um, new coordinator that's coming on January 27th for Vision Zero. Good. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. When are they going to open it up for the task force to you? Well, I'm pretty sure they're waiting until that coordinator gets settled. and you know. So for first day? <laughs> 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 like we threw Kyle in for <laughs> right exactly exactly yeah so we'll see hopefully soon yeah yeah once she gets her legs under yeah. 
Pavs Native been meeting at all? Uh, we we will be meeting towards the latter part of this month. I think um, I have it on my calendar. Oh yeah, we meet. I think that's also on a Thursday. Man, that Thursday is going to be a big Thursday, busy Thursday. But yeah, and we're meeting at a different location. Um, only for this month. Next month, it will still stay in Adams County at the Adams County um, building. So, okay. Yeah. Would you do me a favor and ask them something? Ask them if um, FRPR has ever presented to them. I know that Phil asked, and I asked Andy if they could FRPR because we would like their support. Nina is. Northern Area Transportation Authority, and it is a group that was formed along I-25, so it's just the municipalities that are I-25, because I wanted at one point to bring Louisville in, and they said they're not really on I-25. So it's a different mindset, but it's, we all work together. Okay. Thank you. So uh, I uh, started new on the Parks and Open Space uh, Commission. And their first issue was uh, having Price and Bryce, the two uh, park <laughs> creatures. Um, uh, they were updating us on uh, new uh, uh, municipal codes uh, for Chapter 13.20, uh, uh, and uh, things around paddlecraft and what that meant, uh, and then uh, then uh, uh, some uh, issues. Uh, around uh, trash and storage of items and how they were gonna, there were some folks that they didn't want to put trash and storage items and things like that uh, in with uh, also people spreading their family's remains in. Uh, that's so they were separating that out to add another amendment to it. What are you talking about? This is is this what you were talking about? Composting bodies? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're doing that? <laughs> no, we're not doing that. We're we're making sure that uh, that uh, if you uh, do that, because you know people will be out there trying to to go to the golf course or to different places and drop off remains or on the trail to Button Rock or places like that. They'll 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 spread the ashes of their loved oh, ones. Oh, God, I was thinking of chopped off fingers. And no, 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 no. <laughs> it's that sort of stuff. And it's then we had thing. people that were doing, uh, would use uh, ammunition boxes for geocaching, and uh, they had to bring in the SWAT team and stuff like that, the bomb squad for that, and they had people that would take uh, metal things to do geocaching that looked like pipe bombs, so they finally got people to understand that if you wanted to do that, you had to put it in a clear, clear container so that uh, it was wow. not construed. You know that it said, "Yeah, this is geocache type of thing," because that. And then uh, issues around camping and permitting, uh, you know, and uh, uh, the issue around sales of uh, goods and services on public lands and stuff like that. So. There's, you know, this is all going to come to us in council after they get a few of the things uh, hammered out. There was a couple of things that we suggested that they, that the board suggested they change, and they had to then take it back to to the uh, legal council, city legal council, and make sure that those things were appropriate. And then you will see it here. Uh, issues around, uh, uh, you know, wildlife. Then they had some issues around, uh, um, you know, the, the levels of the class one, class two, and class three uh, electric bikes on some of the trails uh, and everything. And then uh, the last thing was charging people uh, with, uh, you know, uh, changing the language of, of a uh, ticket you may get that if you want to go ahead and pay it, you can and you know basically plead no contest like you do with your traffic mm -hmm. tickets. But if you want to, uh, that way, 
what they were finding is, is that people would come to court, uh, Price and Bryce would come to court and have to, have to uh, go and uh, uh, always show up to court, unlike our police officers that don't always show, have to show up to court because they're not, the, the ticket's not being challenged or anything. Mm -hmm. And so instead, uh, they're getting it so it's a little bit more in line with that sort of thing. But if you want to challenge it, you can, then they'll show up to court. And if you don't want to challenge it, then uh, you can just pay the fine. Now, hearing things from people out there, I heard my daughter say her friend went up to Button Rock and made the mistake of bringing the dog with them, and it ended up, uh, they got a ticket, uh, not a warning, but a ticket for around $400. And you either paid the $400 or you went to court to see if you could get a, if you could get uh, 90 days probation and then pay a hundred dollars. Well, like a lot of people, you don't want to put anything that would show that you had probation in the court system. So, you know, that's something we probably need to look at a little bit to see how how steep that fine is. We certainly don't want people up there with dogs after we told them not to, and I'm sure we've got plenty of signage up there, but but it's something to, to realize that we've got to probably keep that in mind. So there's some issues around around that, and the the levels of fines, like the first offense, hundred dollars, second offense for certain things, uh, two hundred dollars, and so on and so forth. I don't think this person that I my daughter was telling me about had been like the third offense. So I think it was like that was her first. It was offense first offense. So it was pretty high. Wow. So it's something that you know I'd have to look at specifically to see what they were getting mm -hmm. written for, other than having a dog with them at, on the trail of Button Rock. So that's Yeah, that's okay. it. especially before we discuss that, find out what the details. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so it's going through uh, legal okay. to make sure that uh, it's all uh, you know in line with other departments that issue tickets and that type of thing. Uh, and so it's it and then in December I had a meeting with the consortium of cities. And uh, that was pretty interesting. We went to the emergency uh, unit where they, whenever they have uh, a serious emergency, maybe I'm repeating, I'm repeating myself, they have these screens that are larger than that computer. I mean, that big screen there, uh, six of them around the room or eight of them around the room, and you can, uh, so you can see the different maps and the different things that are going on in different areas. They've got you know, computers that are just designated to, you know, animal uh, collection. Uh, so somebody who mans that uh, from the county. Uh, another one around, uh, uh, you know, different varieties of, of uh, problems. They run scenarios. Uh, they run what they call a fishbone of every incident. So what, and, and uh, do some practice incident uh, uh, you know, delegation so that people kind of know what their part is and, and how they're, you know, distributing uh, materials. So uh, that was uh, uh, to, a, to a site uh, and uh, where the incident command starts and everything and where they fall back to. And it's just really, really interesting. And it's, uh, it's in South Boulder over near the airport, so it's kind of uh, an interesting place to check out so near the, the jail mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's uh, if you get a chance to check it out it's it's got some cool uh, features to it okay. so that's about it okay. hey, can I add one thing the one that came up on my calendar is February 1st for the transportation mobility yeah I was going to tell you that it yeah. is it's February it's on the Thursday I was half right yeah, you were, mm -hmm. yeah. but it's February 1st, February 1st 5 30 to 7 what, what is that that's a transportation mobility plan where they um, have an open yeah, house forum. Yeah, oh, I think it's open. Mm -hmm. But also, I wanted to add on to what you were saying, Sean, and that in transportation, we always talked about red light cameras, and the engineers have always said you get a lot of backlash from the you know citizens that they, you know, they anyway, a lot of contested situations. So it's it's almost better just to have law enforcement catch them. Than well, that's cameras because you know that that 
know, contest is a is a problem. You know, yeah. people feel like they need to have their day well, in court or they need to have their story heard. Well, having fine uh, results in Fort Collins and in Boulder, they, they must not have too much of that going on because they're they're uh, they keep them around and they expand on them. So, I'm, and about a year or so ago, my daughter got one in Fort Collins. <laughs> so I'm thinking. Okay, I'm thinking that there's probably uh, some value to it. Mm -hmm. It's just around the idea of how expensive each one is, like some thirty or forty thousand dollars. Maybe I've got that low by. Yeah, it's like <coughs> council gave us direction to look at that before, and it's um, it's like forty thousand uh, dollars of light pole yeah. or some version. So it's pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. um, there's some other things occurring with the state legislature on some of these issues, so they're, they're looking into it again. Um, from a public safety standpoint, when we look at the number of crashes that we have at intersections, I think, you know, if we can manage the cost, it makes sense to make people aware of it, because if, even if you don't generate a lot of tickets, it's really about stopping those folks that are blowing through the lights. Um, based on the amount of T-bones that we have, it, but they're trying to figure out the cost. This is our, our worst accident problem uh, yeah. intersection is Nelson and Homer. Um, I don't think it is anymore. 66 in Maine is one. 66 in Maine. 17th in Maine. Uh, in Maine. And yeah. and 17th in Maine is another one. I think maybe Mountain View and Pace is one. We, so our, some of our most significant accidents now are people running red lights, mm -hmm. the challenge is it's almost impossible to have officers at all of these intersections. Mm -hmm. And so that's the utility in it, but we're trying to figure out the cost. And maybe Vision Zero will help with that somehow. Maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Susie, do you have a minute? I mean, do you need a minute or two to get Yeah. Ready? Is there somebody else who wants Me. to? Me. I'll go off. So uh, the first thing I want to say is that um, I have the ethics thing done, uh, the ethics code. I sent it to uh, somebody to edit it and make sure that, I mean, format it, make sure that I have all of the ones, twos, A, B, Cs in the correct order. And then um, if, are you still willing to edit it, Susie? And mm -hmm. I'll send it to okay. Susie, and then it'll go to you and then it'll come to us in pre-session and uh, everybody edit and decide whether you like the way it says or what it doesn't say and then it'll go back to the drawing board or it'll all be okay so i'm happy that's done also uh, there's been a lot of input from the colorado sun did a thing on all of the utility companies as they were moving forward and in the to meet the, the uh, state's greenhouse gas emissions timetable, and PRPA was at the bottom. So there was a lot of backlash, a lot of backlash for that, and uh, that PRPA is not meeting goals and standards, etc. So I reached out to another mayor, and actually Javier from PRPA sent out a uh, news release as to what that was about. I can send it if you're interested, but. I got another uh, mayor, Jenny Arndt, from Fort Collins. I got her input on it just because sometimes I think maybe I'm not understanding it correctly. Mm -hmm. So here's what she wrote. She said, PRPA is following all laws. The law set at an interim goal and also said that for entities not reaching that new, that new goal in 2027, they need to file their plan with the state for reaching the 2030 goal, which PRPA has done and it is on target to reach the 2030 goal. Um, the transition is not smooth. We did, according to the Colorado Sun, they feel that we are at a place where we can't in three years, well, it'd be two years now, uh, meet the 2027 goal. But there's nothing really definite saying we can't. So um, it is still our goal but we put in a plan to meet it for 2030. I do have some questions I'm gonna ask at the next meeting 
and, and I'll let you know what that is all about. So uh, there's a lot of a lot of talk going around PRPA, mm -hmm. which is in a way I'm glad. Um, so I just got an email, Susie, that the formatting is done, so I'll just send you that okay. code edits. Um, the other thing is, uh, shoot, the Historic Commission Board is, um, it's interesting that they are going to have their uh, retreat the same time that the council retreat, same day, same place, same time. But I think we are now in the process of uh, changing that. I think it's going to be on the 17th. So um, we found that, at the uh, that out at the board. And I thought, well, hold on. We're, we're using that room same day, same time. Cause we get priority. So uh, they changed that around. Um, that's an interesting board to be on, and I'm glad I'm on it. Uh, I can't really report much because it was only the first meeting, and they were kind of we were looking at the new year and what they were going to do, and uh, so at the retreat, I'll learn more specifically since it was the first one. Um, I think that's about it. That's all I've got. No, Front Range Passenger Rail District. Okay. <laughs> there's also a lot of talk about uh, FRPR, and there's a lot of support, but as Diane had said, uh, the uh, taxes for, F, for RTD and FRPR, if they both go into effect, that's going to be about 0.9% for us just for rail. So that's, that is one of the reasons that we need to look at RTD very closely and say, we can't do this. You're either going to, you're either going to build it or you're not, and because we need to have our service delivery plan, the SDP, done by April or May that RTD has no plans, and I talked to our director, Eric Davidson, uh, last week. We have, RTD has no plans for a path forward for Front Range Passenger Rail, none. They haven't made any input uh, on it at all. So um, I think it's only fair to the residents that, um, that we look at and say, FRPR is the real deal. It's a real railroad operator. It's a real uh, BNSF. It's a real railroad. RTD is not. They they never have made plans to do the front range passenger rail. I'm very sorry, I said that wrong. To, they never made plans to build or complete the Northwest Corridor in the 20 years we've been on. And uh, at 2050, it'll be 46 years. Mm -hmm. I personally cannot be in the seat and say that's okay. So um, that'll be another meeting, and uh, I've also been doing some research on it. And I think there is a way in my unprofessional legal. <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a lawyer. I just pretend to be. So uh, <laughs> yeah, at three sessions. Um, so that's it. These are these are all pretty heavy duty things. I think. Uh, the other things I said to both Harold and Zach that the Supreme Court is hearing sometime this week, if they haven't already, I haven't kept up with it. Um, the, the ordinances and the issues on homelessness mm -hmm. and the, the things that I've read about and heard is that they want to undo all ordinances on homelessness that local municipalities and counties have been put in place for uh, not arresting, that you can arrest homeless people. This is the Colorado Supreme Court? No, I think this is the federal, but okay. um, no, Colorado wouldn't do that. Okay. I'm not exactly sure of the, the details of that, but I think we should keep our eye on it because it's, it's going to affect us. Mm -hmm. Definitely going to affect us. There's also been some legislators working on a universal health care bill for Colorado. We now have a bill number for that. So I'm going to ask Sandy to bring that forward um, so that we can read it. Let me, let me tell you what the bill number is and you can look it up if you're interested. Um, um, 
because I want to uh, testify. Mm -hmm. So we need to have a, a good discussion on council about is this something that we want to uh, support or not. Date set for hearings? Yeah. Not yet. Right now they're looking for different uh, organizations, individuals who will write letters to the editor. But uh, at, I, at this point, I don't know. If I do, I want to write it as a mayor, and I can't do that unless the council adopts it and supports it. So the answer is no. So uh, it looks like my folder didn't come out on my phone. It's only on my laptop. So I can't, I'll send you that though. Did act for concerning the analysis of universal health care system? It's the same bill that we supported last year. Okay, and what that happened? was House Bill 23-1209. Uh, yeah, but, but this has been an issue, the one that was um, sponsored by McCormick. Yes, and, and Martian and um, Right now, what you know what happened to that last one, that last bill? Uh -uh. It was it was sent to the committee, but the committee chair didn't pull it and read it because he didn't understand it. He kept putting it on the bottom of the uh, pile, okay. so it so never it made it, it to never committee. Made it. Got it. And then I guess Karen was furious with the guy and okay. said, that when she explained it to him, that it wasn't to actually. It was only to study other um, states that had universal health care. Was it working? How did they get it through? You know, the ins and outs of. Okay. Well, now they can't, uh, the court has found that they can't do the, the, the evaluation uh, software that they were using to uh, determine which bills came forward uh, and had priority. So maybe Eugene, you have some input on that to, to explain if anybody doesn't understand that. So I thought it was an open meetings issue. Yeah, that's that it was, you know, public policy being made but not on the public side. Because they prioritize which bills yeah. got the light of day. Okay. Right so in that way. Yeah. House Bill twenty four ten seventy five. We were just Thank at the you. meeting where I was at, we were discussing that. Oh, so okay. I just didn't have it on this note. I made a folder for it on my laptop because I was getting all these emails and it didn't come on my phone for some silly reason. So that's it, that's all I've got. Okay. Okay. So um, well I have so library is meeting next week. So I had already updated council from the last meet time we met. The museum advisory board is tomorrow. <laughs> I had already updated you all for that. Um, RCAB will be this will be this month will be my first meeting with them. They meet the fourth um, the fourth Wednesday, um, and then Art and Public Places meets on Thursdays. <laughs> so this will be my first meeting with them as well. However, I do have a couple of updates. One with the youth council, they are interested and wanted to collect council feedback. I kind of mentioned a little bit about this before, but to actually have a round table mm -hmm. with city council and youth council. Um, you know, one of the things that I was talking to, to folks about is, you know, maybe coming up with questions <coughs> that they would have for us and um, that we can, can answer. Idea. So, um, you know, I just kind of wanted to throw that out there to see if there was interest. I mean, we'd have to set it up ahead of time, have it open to the public, and because it would be from our side, you know, having to uh, have an open meeting. Um, so if there is interest in that, we can kind of work out dates and times. And I like that idea. I think uh, more boards need to talk to each other, mm -hmm. not just a council. So it'd yes. be kind of nice to, to invite yeah. other related boards to. Yes, and so, and this one would be led by high schoolers. So that, um, yes, and, and you know, some of them have really invested interest in local politics and, um, you know, they're, they have a lot of good good questions, very inquisitive group. So um, I will let them know, okay. and then we can get the ball rolling on that component. So in addition to the other boards and commissions, 
I also sit on the core and leads steering committee. Mm. And we had our meeting last Friday, and I just I felt that it was very prudent to bring forward the information we're talking talking about on this. Um, so you know that we do have an annual report that will be sent public, and I'll forward it to Don, or I'll let Don know and, uh, once that comes and see if she can forward it to to the rest of the council, okay. um, as well as newsletters. One of the things that we felt over the last year and a half that we've been that I've been meeting with them with getting this information out to the public and really having people understand what the dynamics of core and leads. I know I've I've heard from constituents and, um, and and being in a place where we've had core come out to our house and you know and it can be intimidating if you don't understand you know because there are you know there were four individuals there and you know they have their vests for protection and it looks intimidating however there's only one that is a police officer you have your core you know your core oh. person who's also an officer there as well um, social worker you know a clinician and so it's a lot of mental health people. So ha by having them come and talk to my son, it was really diverting from jail and having him, you know, calm down, you know, when he's having a meltdown or getting very accelerated. <laughs> um, and you know, and he's six foot, so it's, we can't we can't restrain him. I mean, when he was little and he'd have a you know a meltdown. Right. We'd, I'd be able to wrap him in his blanket and do the burrito thing, and um, I can't do that now that he's an adult. So being able to, to call somebody who can work with him and, and calm him down, um, rather than going to the ER or having having him arrested. You know, so that, that kind of piece, and really helping the public to understand that it's not a bad thing when they come to your door, and how to, how to utilize that service. So, um, so we were kind of, you know, one of the ideas was to have the newsletter that comes out and kind of update the public on that. So we have those going and I can share those with you as well. Um, one of the things that, um, you know, as we were discussing um, with Emily Van Dorn, Dorn, is that right? Um, yes. She was mentioning that as far as statistics wise, 40% uh, increase in case referrals core and leads uh, with 15% increase in connectivity with unhoused. So when I think about, you know, legislators or Supreme Court making these rulings, the impact that it has mm -hmm. on services that we're already providing mm -hmm. can be, you know, have a negative impact. Right. And, you know, we're working with unhoused individuals to get them in that correct line of service. So I think the work that we're doing with the impact teams and um, core and leads team that I think we're making positive headway in addressing this. It just, it takes time. And then it also um, breaking down those barriers and, um, and perceptions that people have, these biases that people have towards seeing police um, presence and um, kind of breaking down that and I, you know, I think so that that's kind of one of the things that we've been discussing as a, as a group and and how we want to address that moving forward. So on the team, we have different representatives, you know, from UC Health, from um, we have um, someone from the DA DA DA's office, um, Ken Kupner. Um He met with us when we were dealing with the Pooter, or not the Pooter, on um, the um, Purdue, sorry. Purdue issue, so that's where I met him before. <laughs> okay, and I knew that I had seen him. That I finally connected the two. We have Andy Feaster, who's um, the core core team leads for public safety, and as well as a um, paramedic, Omar Morgasi. I think I'm saying these names right. Um, so that you know, they, we have you know just not within the city, but other community agencies involved in this work. Um, one of the questions that we're Cut, uh, working to address for this next um, quarter is um, are we as trauma informed as we think we are? So we're evaluating, evaluating that. I think we're you know, operating on a lot of assumptions. Um, you know, one of the things that um, was brought up in, from the DA's office is work that's happening in the jail and then conversations that I've had with the county commissioner, um, Ashley Stoltzman, about money going towards expanding 
the jail. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, really, okay, what are we, what are we, why? So, you know, well, let's, let's look at what, what, what are we looking to address? Are we looking to address mental health? So if we're looking to address mental health, are, are we wanting to go the jail avenue or are we wanting to provide services? So that's why we really, we really need to know how much money we're getting from that, um, what is it, not fentanyl, is it fentanyl money? The opioid, opioid. opioid money. So getting that dollar amount, because there are opportunities for us to be able to tap in to, um, you know, if we do something, we're expanding the jail, or maybe have like an in-between, right. where people are transitioning out of the jail system because maybe it's mental health related, drug drug addiction related, and transitioning them in to something that has more wraparound services that address needs. One of the issues that we discussed, and I, I talked to this, spoke to this, is you know, uh, the human mind is not a silo. There are many different aspects, whether it's mental disability in line with um, mental disorder, along with drug addiction. So there's multiple things, but we have service providers that maybe specialize in um, mental illness, but not the other. I or see. they uh, they can deal with um, you know um, mental disabilities, but they can't deal with you know drug addiction. If there's somebody who's disabled who has a drug addiction, how do you deal with streamline those two services. So it's less about there are, not, there are no beds available, it's finding um, people who can provide those services in these facilities. So kind of filling in those, those gaps. Have you, have you thought about re-entry initiative? That's what they do. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, no, no, because we were, um, so we were an, an, an al analyzing our processes and how we can collect feedback from people who've been, who went through the process. You know, one of the things that, and you know, it's like that Facebook is toxic, I'm sorry, but I have, you know, I feel like, okay, it's kind of good to know what people are saying, but some of the things that people are saying, you know, the complaints, I, I read uh, one piece, and I, you know, I want to try to find a way to reach out to that individual, but I can't find their real name. Um, but, you know, complaining about, how the core team needs to be disbanded and you know the bad interaction it was like well we really want to come you know let's let's find out why that that bad interaction is happening and and what what was it was it perception you know because your perception is your reality so was it a perceived issue that you know we what you kind of want to navigate that piece um, I think by the time things come to council they've already exhausted all other measures or they're just wanting to complain. So how can we elicit um, you know, a streamlined system where people can provide specific feedback that would help us as an organization improve what the core and leads team is doing? Okay. I think from my own personal experience, I've not had bad experience. And this is talking about years before I was on council even. So it's not like, they're giving me specialized treatment. It was like they didn't know us from who, <laughs> you know, back in 2017 or 2016. So, um, so I think just getting that education piece out there, as well as giving people an opportunity to provide feedback. Um, so those were some of the big things that we are talking about. Um, I think staffing is also a challenge. Is that's, you know, so what do what do we do to get more people in. If we're trying to move people from patrol to core team, but we don't have new people coming into patrol, we can't, you know, well, we can't share that. There's a shortage of, yes. of people that are qualified to actually be that caseworker, uh -huh. manager, and, and psychologist on, on site mm -hmm. in general. And so then, you know, it gets us thinking, okay, we need to go back even farther to you know, the educational institutions where people are, you know, what's, what's happening and are people even going to school for these things and uh, not much less applying for these, for these roles. So how can we connect with um, area universities and schools to... Well, we're seeing, we're seeing that, that the pay 
if you go to the Bureau, the Bureau of Statistics, <laughs> yeah. they'll tell you that it's one of the, uh, for the mm -hmm. amount of school that you need to have mm -hmm. to accomplish this. There's no, uh, it's a 40 year payback practically. Yeah, the get, cost of schooling. The, the cost yes. of the pay, yes, yeah, it, it is. It's not, it's not, it's it not is. Even close. Yeah. It's e easier if you're already on that path and then you're yeah. just adding on yeah. to yeah. Say, an education. And that's, and that's, kind, that's as far as the core team goes, they're looking at patrol, you know, moving people from patrol who have, who gain that experience and then just move them over to um, the core team. But it's finding the patrol staffing, so actually finding officers to come in has been a challenge. So that recruitment piece, or even retention, because there are people who say, oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll join, join on, and then they, they end up not. Um, they take a job somewhere else. Just for my education. Oh, is this is core, so yes it is. Oh, it's a pre-session, but. Um, <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> help me with the core team acronym. I'm sure this was part of my orientation. Just no, they probably just said. Well, that's core. a lot to take in there. It is. Yeah, it so is. Yeah. So, yeah, I can I can What's pull core? that up. Do you know? Oh, okay. Outreach, 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 response. Team. It's a response. Response is in the word somewhere. Yes, right. What is What's core? 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 What's the yeah. Crisis outreach response and engagement. There's I knew response. I didn't know anything else. <laughs> Do you um, was that the only one that you have a, have to report on, or is there? Um, so it was the, the library. Youth, the, the they're youth. all meeting this week okay. or at the end of the month. So it was just the youth council and core is okay. what I had. But um, I feel like it's important that council knows. Oh, I'm glad. Especially yeah. as we are approving or setting priorities. Um, you know, yeah. I, I want to make sure that, that this organization, how, we, how we've operated with, with this lens is um, And stays core funded. reaches so many things. Uh, LHA, mental yes, health partners, yes. um, the, the residents. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. it's and very, very important. Is a separate group? Leads. Yes, lead. Lead. Do you have the acronym for lead? <laughs> I, there's too much stuff for my brain. So one's more crisis, and more one's more kind of that transition into case man management. Yes, and law enforcement assisted diversion. 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 And, so, and then the angel initiative with the drug. Yes. Okay. So and if I can add to some of what the mayor for Tim is saying, that's the group that has come in in terms of another center of excellence to where they've all met. Mm -hmm. So Christina can be core lead, senior services, housing, youth services, anywhere where there's a mental health touch. Mm -hmm. And they're starting to work on building that center of excellence. So they're now not operating in kind of the silos mm -hmm. which historically has occurred and there's more moving to an integrated operation which will tie into the three clinicians that council approved in the budget mm -hmm. that we have on the house. Well, one's on the housing authority side, two are the marijuana funds, all of the all house together that support the broader um, community. And there's also going to be a collaboration with um, the school district. Mm -hmm. That was also brought, so they're going to be allocating um, you know, a clinician um, FTE to be able to work with schools. I think it's at Longmore High. I have that in my Yeah, I think like it's that, that, that clinician will kind of work with the SROs generally. Yes. And they may be housed somewhere, but I if there's a situation that don't move to that location, yes. and then if we find that this is really working, then the school district will start funding more of these clinicians mm -hmm. to go into other schools. Yeah. Is um, mental health partners fully staffed? No. Mm. That's probably going to tie into the next conversation. Yeah, I assumed it would. <laughs> but okay. um, yeah, definitely some struggles. And then we meet quarterly, so our next meeting March, March April, April. April. I think it's going to that. Yep. Um, I forgot. I had an email. I got an email today. Um, I don't. I, I've talked about this probably ooh, over the summer, I don't remember, 
Um, but the life skills. Oh yes, I was gonna ask you about that. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. So the life skills, um, I call it the life skills carnival. I don't know what, what the kids are gonna call it or children, youth and families are gonna call it. But I got an email today asking, they're getting ready to put, they're working on the marketing for it. Um, and they're going to create an Instagram reel to promote the event, which will be in April at the fairgrounds, which the two uh, commissioner, uh, Ashley and Martha, were the ones who supported it. Mm -hmm. And we got this, you know, covered. And um, Christina has really been working really hard. And Hilda and um, uh, is it Giselle? 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 Yes, close. Close. <laughs> okay. I didn't get a chance to meet her when we first started all of this. So, I mean, I can't remember. I have met her. I'm sorry. I have met her. Anyway, um, so they want to schedule a time where we, where we, they all have the students, the kids, the, the kids at the center, and then all of us to be a part of this video, this Instagram video. Oh, nice. For the life skills. So for, for you, uh, Diane, the life skills is about teaching young teenagers and kids how to change a tire, how to tie a tie, just regular life skill things that I know probably our age group, we knew those things, we had to learn those things. And so kids nowadays, you know, everything is on your phone and mm -hmm. there's no practical learning. It's just trying to figure it out through your phone or, or YouTube videos, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But it also brings the community together so like Ace Hardware said, let us know what you need because at the end, whatever the life skills that we are able to do that day, I would like to create a basket. Like if someone shows them how to thread a needle or have a basket with a needle or a wrench in it and all those things that they learn at the life skills, I call it carnival, I don't know what they're gonna call it. Um, just have businesses, local businesses come together and, and teach these kids how to just some regular skills that we, some of us know, some of us don't, like I don't know how to tie a tie, but um, but yeah, how to turn on the stove, you know? How to wash your clothes. I don't know if we're gonna do that. Yeah. I let them decide on what it was, because I had a whole list <laughs> of things that were like, Shakita, we're not gonna have time to do all that. But, um, <laughs> but that's okay, and what we can do, we will do, and I'm totally, excited about it and it's going to be in april i don't have the we don't have the date yet but it will be at the fairgrounds so the commissioners approved that uh, for us to utilize that space at the fairgrounds for the, our life skills Neat. yes so when you say they are going to do the marketing who is the they the children youth and families uh, oh okay. yeah yeah so i uh, she want they want to get it done by the end of the month so they want to have the video done by the end of the month so they can start that? marketing. Huh? Is Erica doing that video? No, it was, there are two or three Ericas here, so. No, Erica, oh, Erica. Um, Erica Ellingsworth took a job. Oh, she said Yeah, her. she took a job with another organization, yeah. so. Oh, so yeah. They're probably working, I don't know who they're working with, but. Yeah. I really liked her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. So some teens to do a TikTok. I know, yeah. TikTok and Instagram, that'd be good. And then also we're gonna get a new, I forgot to mention this, I don't have a meeting with DDA until later, uh, the 24th, but um, we're getting a new pizza place, I can't remember the name of it, but the guy uh, on Main Street, and he is also in, um, up the mountains. Uh, Lions? No, Estes, Estes Park. He said he sells 600 pizzas a day. And so, New York style pizzas. Is yes. that the one in, in, uh, in Allen's Park? I don't, I don't. This is a new one that's really going So, Longmont, we are, we're, we are truly lucky to have him to come on Main Street. I wonder if he called me. I got a call from Estes Park. And I, an I answered, but nobody was. So, he'll be on Main Street. We're going to get a new uh, deli on Main Street. Mm -hmm. The Magic Fairy people uh, bought the building oh. or whatever, so they're going to have a, a deli right next door to it. Oh, okay. Yeah, which is right across from Chiba Hut, which is kind of weird, but it's going to work. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing. 
But I'm excited about the pizza. I'm like, hey, I, you know, if you don't do gluten free, I don't, I'm not gluten sensitive. But if you, it would be appreciative if you did do gluten free and also vegan. Like, I don't have to have no vegan cheese. Just give me some veggies, and you're good. So. I forgot to tell you all, they said in the spring, so hopefully by April, both the that both of those businesses should be up on Main Street. So. Then Tio Cal is opening up. Yes. Yeah, that one too. What is? Tio Cal. What is that? Harold's excited for that one. It's, um, <laughs> it's kind of like a, the best way is kind of a, more of a Californian mix. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. They're in Lafayette. And then they're in Nevada, I think. And Harold's excited for that because Harold's wife's excited for that. <laughs> Where are they going to be? Um, the old guitar, etc. building. Oh, okay. oh, okay. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah they're pretty, they're pretty busy in Lafayette. If you don't, if you don't have reservations, it's hard to get a walk up in there. Really? Yeah. Huh? Where? Lafayette. Oh, okay. okay. You know, you have to have reservations to go to Suelos, correctly, to... Really? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I gotta see. Got him on camera. Okay. That's <laughs> that's, just, uh, that's over Tiki. The, the Tiki head over near uh, where the old uh, uh, Outback was. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Hmm. Good for them, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People complain we don't have a good place to eat in this yeah, town. Like, yeah. well, well, they're very fickle. They're very fickle. The people? Yeah. Okay. I'm not fickle. <laughs> so, uh, upcoming events. It, is, it isn't in cement yet, but uh, we're planning. Uh, David Hornbacher and I talked about as well as Javier from PRPA, a tour of the uh, PRPA solar panels where they have all their solar panels as well as the coal plant that is going to go out of commission because i think it's really important to see yeah. what we are actually doing you know hands-on type of stuff so hopefully about depending upon weather march or april mm -hmm. probably april is that wrong yeah. Yeah. I always think and of Bonanza when you say that. Did, and you, did you speak to the legislative breakfast that we attended? Yes, I okay. was there. Yeah. No, did you get a chance to talk to council? No. Okay. No. Because I went to that. It was interesting. It was. It was interesting. I, uh, go I ahead. Never, I had never gone to one, so I didn't know what to expect. But, um, you know, we heard from the governor. You know, really the top three priorities, climate, transportation, and housing. Right. Um, however, my thought is, but I didn't really hear anything concrete. No, nothing. And what are they going to do to help municipalities achieve those goals rather than, yeah. you know, because I, I see it with the education all the time, unfunded mandates. That's what Phil and I were looking at each other. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. Uh, or, uh, where's the money? Before. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. It's and allow fun. us to get it done. Yeah. Also, not not micromanage us. So. It's it's really it's fun to go because you can network and people are there. But um, yeah, it's it's a lot of what what have we achieved? Mm -hmm. Which I think is really good because we complain a lot in all of those areas mm -hmm. about what we need to do. So that part of it was really good. This is what this is what Community Solutions has done. Mm -hmm. over the past year um, and then it's always interesting to listen to the governor mm -hmm. he's very excited about all of it but mm -hmm. there's no teeth in it yeah, that's, that's it i just, just i wanted no to i was waiting to hear something specific that he would say and, and to make this happen, happen we are going to and yes. that that wasn't part of it mm -hmm. so we're just really back to what we would Basically, what he says is, "This is what I want all of you to do." Mm -hmm. But we need the funding, and we need, you know, just the respect that we know what we're doing for our locality. Let us do what we have to do. It's always interesting to walk out with, like Joni Marsh, and she says, "The only thing we're planning went through to get there." <laughs> or, yeah. You know. mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, it was good. Yeah. I like seeing everything.
Yeah. So yeah, so if anybody has, can I think it was open to council, or I just invited myself, I don't know. Because I've done that too. Yeah. <laughs> I just show up. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring my old soul down to member. Uh, yeah, the city yeah. is a member of community, so we so should still request to go. Um, yeah. So see you there next year, Diane. Mm -hmm. So that, that is mm -hmm. cool. it. Unless you have cool. something uh -huh. else that, that you want to throw out there. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, good. It's like I'm trying to go through the change. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad it wasn't Girl, just me. Her. Okay. It was very cold. Okay. So right. we're done unless you have something else you want to. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I had heard that the governor uh, is kind of pushing for the 0.8 percent tax for the front range passenger rail. But I feel like we've already done our 0.4 percent. Right. You know, without any. Any, yeah, well, without any product coming back to us. And that point has been made uh, with the FRPR board, um, and they're very well aware of that because we're not the only ones. There are three other uh, communities, or I guess counties, that have been promised rail and haven't gotten it and won't. Mm -hmm. But um, what FR, one of the things that we're batting around is doing a segmented rail and you don't pay the taxes until your segment is being built. Um, will that give us enough money to start? We don't know. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, there are all kinds of uh, interesting things, D discussions, I guess. Um, and how do you put that on a ballot measure? Mm -hmm. Because they're so hard to read <clears throat> and to understand from the general public's point of view. So the marketing has to be great. Um, the other thing is that Faith Winters is in charge of redoing RTD, coming up with some big fiscal ideas for transportation in general. And she did, they are taking a new to account my, uh, <clears throat> my point of having a uh, transportation fee for everybody in the state, especially, or an event fee. For, you know, if you're going to go skiing and you're from Texas, you have to pay for our roads as well, and you're going to be using them so it'll be so much a fee on your ticket. Faith Winters is the new RTD director? No, Faith Winters is a senator, a state senator, and um, she's been on transportation for a long, a long time, but when the governor broke up his uh, land use bill into three sections, um, land use, transportation, and housing. He put her on the transportation part, all under the land use umbrella. Mm -hmm. When 213 went up in smoke. So we have just a minute or two before they come in? Mm -hmm. Yep. Did you want to say something? No, I was just trying to, oh. uh, trying to figure out, looking at time. <laughs> I thought, uh, so, no, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. But if we're adjourning, then we can let them come in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So are we, we are adjourned. Yeah.